Yo, what's up? So I have made no secret of the fact that I've been a diehard Adobe Photoshop user for years at this point, but I have managed to migrate the majority of my Photoshop work over to GIMP for two key reasons. First of all, GIMP is free in every sense of the word. It is free in terms of cost and also free and open source. And the cost is a pretty big deal now since Adobe is just raising their prices year after year. So GIMP being free is pretty nice. But additionally, GIMP is often more powerful than Photoshop a lot of the time. Um, there are certainly drawbacks and quirks and I'm no stranger to criticizing GIMP. I've made a number of videos criticizing it and I'm sure I will criticize it more in this one. But I do think overall, uh, GIMP actually outperforms Photoshop for me a lot of the time. So you can be the judge of whether it will do that for you or not. Um, I'm essentially just going to try to give you a guide to the basics of GIMP um, from the perspective of somebody switching over from Photoshop or somebody who is just trying to get started with GIMP. Since I think the learning curve can be a little bit steep, though there is a fair amount of stuff that will also be somewhat intuitive. Anyways, um, let's just start with go to edit and then go to your keyboard shortcuts here. Um, set your keyboard shortcuts, set them to whatever is most intuitive to you. Don't use the defaults, always set your keyboard shortcuts. I will upload mine if you want to use or reference mine, but I would highly recommend setting your own. Um, this is actually one thing that I think GIMP does way better than Photoshop, which is that Photoshop often does not give you keyboard shortcuts for absolutely everything. Um, it gives you keyboard shortcuts for a lot of stuff, and then you find that one thing that does not allow you to set a keyboard shortcut for it. So GIMP actually allows you to set keyboard shortcuts for virtually everything. Um, you can also go into edit and then uh, preferences here and adjust your toolbox. So I've got my toolbox arranged pretty much like Photoshop. So you can just go to toolbox here and arrange, you know, what groups the various tools are in or what order they're in. Um, I will upload my configuration on GitHub if you want to use mine. And let's start with the move tool versus the unified transform tool. So um, the unified transform tool is probably what you're gonna wanna use if you are familiar with Photoshop's move tool, since this is gonna allow you to do stuff like scale and rotate, click drag to rotate. Um, the corner, inner corner boxes will allow you to shear your image. I can just do control Z to undo that last change, or I can do escape to entirely uncommit that transformation. I can also uh, change the point of rotation if I wanted to do that just with that center circle there. So that's the unified transform um, versus the move tool. Um, to demonstrate this, let me actually, let me take a screenshot and just paste it in so I have a second layer. Um, the move tool, so I can just move this around normally. I could also click to get that layer beneath it and move it if I wanted to do that. So that's the that's the main reason to use the move tool, whereas the unified transform is gonna allow you to do all sorts of you know scaling and that sort of stuff. Um, let's talk about selections a little bit. So fuzzy select in GIMP, I think actually works really well. Um, I honestly have zero complaints with fuzzy select. I think it really does its job perfectly and it has all of the options you would expect with, you know, feathering edges, threshold, etc. Um, the scissor select is somewhat equivalent to what Photoshop has in terms of the magnetic lasso, but I really don't think the scissor select is perfect. I mean, you can see like it's doing an okay job here, but it's really not great. And honestly, if I'm going to be doing, you know, heavy selection work, I will boot up Photoshop to do that. That is one of the two cases in which I will boot up Photoshop. And I'm going to show you the other case in a second here, but yeah, that is the scissor select. Um, you do also have a number of other selection menus. So you've got your free select, which is roughly equivalent to the lasso. You've got your foreground select and your select by color. Um, and as you can see, um, every, every time I hover over something, it's going to give you a tooltip. So that's pretty useful if you're just trying to get started. Oh, also you have your marquees um, as you would, you know, they're basically, that's always going to be the same no matter what program you're in. Anyways, so yeah, tooltips are pretty useful. You can also go to help and then read the documentation if you want to. I'm always going to say read the documentation. It's like a, that's like a staple of a bread video, you know, saying read the documentation. <laughs> Anyway, so, yep, that's tooltips, that's documentation. So, next up, I did want to talk about the text tool, which I truly hate the GIMP text tool. Um, I will always complain about the GIMP text tool. I think it is just unintuitive, and I have talked about it so much that I won't bore you talking about it more. But generally, if I'm going to be working with text, I'm going to go into Photoshop to do it. Um, just to quickly show you, if I want to get uh, styles on this, so basically similar to Photoshop blending options, um, I can go to filters, uh, text styling, giggle effects, and I could turn on like, um, I don't know, I think I have a drop shadow preset. Yeah, I do. So there we go. Drop shadow, basic, basic uh, text shadow there. And I could, you know, I could edit this. I could make it look better. And I could probably manage to approximate the majority of what you can do with Photoshop blending options on text. 
you could probably really manage to do all of it with GIMP, but I just find Photoshop's uh, text, uh, you know, interface is just a lot more intuitive. So I much prefer to do my text work in Photoshop. Um, something that GIMP actually manages to do quite fine is the alignment and distribution. Um, Photoshop, I think, you know, I really like Photoshop's alignment and distribution options, and I think GIMP manages to do it pretty well. Um, it's a little bit different from Photoshop, but I think you can, you know, if you play around with it a little bit, you'll learn how it works. And I think, you know, it works pretty well. So alignment and distribution, um, that's this tool up here. I don't know, I have it bound to Q. I don't know if that's default or not. You can set it to whatever you want. But anyways, I think it works pretty well. Um, we've also got our brush tool. And to me, the brush tool is actually a marked advantage over Photoshop. And the reason for that, oh, let me go to a layer that I can draw on. The reason for that is that GIMP actually offers you way better smoothing than Photoshop, in my opinion. Um, Photoshop smoothing of your brush tool smoothing. So smooth throw is basically allowing you to draw with the mouse instead of having like a ton of, you know, jittery drawing. Um, Photoshop here, let me take this all the way down so you can see what it looks like without it. So, you know, say I'm just trying to draw stuff. It's super jittery, right? You get the idea. I'll pull this all the way up so you can see it well when I draw, it's a lot better. So anyways, um, Photoshop is often quite laggy when it comes to smooth stroke and I think GIMP just does a much better job. If I'm actually gonna be trying to draw with my mouse here, I think I can do a pretty good job of it with GIMP as opposed to Photoshop where I always feel like I'm struggling. So to me, the brush tool in GIMP is a marked improvement over Photoshop. And of course, we've got all of our, you know, fancy brushes like our classic bell pepper brush and our uh, GIMP logo brush. I could use the, oh, nice. We got a, we got an Easter egg on the GIMP logo brush. I mean, man, this is, this is the number one reason to use GIMP, guys. The, the Easter eggs on the GIMP logo brush and the bell pepper brush. This is, this is why you want to use GIMP. Now, anyways, <laughs> I think the brush tool is great. Um, you've also got your classic pencil tool, airbrush, your eraser tool. That's all pretty straightforward. It all basically just works. So no complaints there, nothing too crazy to say. Your dodge and burn, I actually really like this. So as opposed to Photoshop, where you've got a separate dodge tool and a separate burn tool, um, your dodge and burn in GIMP is actually one combined tool, which is really nice. So I can just burn here and then I can just hold control and dodge here, uh, which is pretty nice um, as opposed to Photoshop where it's, you know, two separate tools. So I think that's pretty nice to just have that option of having it in one tool rather than two. There's also your smudge tool, your blur slash sharpen tool. Um, same story as with the dodge burn, you've just got blur slash sharpen, so that's pretty nice. Um, as for clone stamp and healing, etc. Um, full disclosure, I don't use this a ton, um, but in my experience, it, it works fine. Um, I don't know, I guess if you use it a ton and you have complaints or praises of it, let me know. But in my opinion, it works fine and it's roughly equivalent to Photoshop. Um, I talked about the text tool. Color picker, I mean, it's a color picker, nothing too crazy. Um, anyways, uh, as to our filters and our, you know, color adjustment, curves adjustment, etc., levels adjustment, GIMP actually does this way better than Photoshop because it offers you so many more options. Um, in terms of your filters, there are just way more options here than in Photoshop. And I will leave it as an exercise to the viewer if you want to play around and figure out what all of these various options do. But in my opinion, this is a marked improvement over Photoshop shop just in terms of giving you more options and of course you've got your basic options just in terms of blurs and stuff and this is actually non-destructive editing so I could just toggle this off and on and off and on so that's that's pretty neat um so yeah that is our filters our colors um oh I did want to mention gradients so if you want to set up a gradient um I feel like this is weirdly deceptive for how you can actually do it so Windows and then dockable dialogues and then open up gradients to get to the gradient editor here and then go to this pencil tool and now you can right click and then you can set your endpoint color. So I don't know, I feel like it's a little bit hard to get to that, but other than that, it works fine. So here's my gradient. I could go ahead and do a gradient here and you'll see this is actually pretty nice. So it doesn't automatically commit the gradient. It allows me to actually move it around if I want to, which is nicer than Photoshop because Photoshop a lot of the time, you know, what I'm doing is I'm doing like the gradient and then control Z and then redoing it in a different position. You probably know how it goes. Or actually, maybe you don't know how it goes, but anyways, um, yeah, I like GIMP's gradient tool quite a bit. I think it does it better than Photoshop's does. Um, what else do we have? Oh, I did want to talk about view a little bit. So something nice that GIMP offers you is you can actually zoom in and out um, to your previous zoom level just with one key bind. Um, I have it bound to grave. I don't know if that's the default shortcut or not, but yeah, it's really nice to be able to just quick zoom in and out to your previous zoom level. level. Also, if you want a completely separate view, you can just go to view and then new view. 
and this will just open a second buffer and now I can go back and forth between my buffers and you know say I draw something here that will appear on my other buffer so that's pretty neat. Um, there's also a number of options in terms of guides and grids and such. If you want to create a new set of guides you can just go to image and then guides and then new guide by percent and this will allow you to set your percent guides. So say I set a guide up halfway through the image here. Um, something really nice that GIMP offers is that you can actually go to um, image and then, uh, where is it? Uh, slice using guides. I had my mouse over it and was like, where is it? <laughs> anyway, slice using guides will just automatically slice for you at that guide. Or if you had a number of guides, it will slice it up. So um, that's actually quite nice. I, I definitely like that GIMP allows you to do that because I think Photoshop, I, I don't know, I think I had an action set up to do something similar to this, which um, I guess that tells you something. The fact that you have to go through and make your Photoshop action in order to do that instead of just having an option, right? Anyway, so I could just do a uh, view and then toggle off my guides there. Um, you also have all sorts of options for, you know, showing your, your padding color or menu bar or rulers, scroll bars, etc. etc. You have all sorts of view options, really. Um, that's actually an area where GIMP definitely shines, just giving you all sorts of view and arrangement options for all of your various menu menus, your, you know, single window mode versus snapping everything out and sticking it on a different monitor. That's pretty neat. Um, anyways, I'm trying to think what else was I supposed to show you? Oh, two other things. Okay. First of all, um, transparency. If you want transparency on your images, go to um, edit and then preferences and set up your new image to, uh, where is it? Default image here. Um, set up transparency here. Uh, where was it? I had it here. Oh, there we go. Transparency. Um, fill with transparency. That will allow you to have transparency automatically on your new images. If you have an image that you don't have transparency on, um, just go into layer and then transparency, add alpha channel, and this will now add transparency to your image. So that's one thing about GIMP that I know trips people up. And honestly, I think it's stupid that they don't have it by default. Everybody uses transparency in images. They should just do it by default. Um, so that's transparency. Something else I did want to talk briefly, briefly about Gaggle operations. Um, I should actually just pull up the tool here. Gaggle operations, I discussed this a bit with the text where this is stuff like your drop shadow or other, you know, stylistic effects that you can add on. Um, this menu, I feel like, you know, let me, let me criticize GIMP a little bit. I think this is a really confusing menu and I think the way that they have this set up is super confusing compared to Photoshop. But, uh, because of how it works, it is actually way more powerful than Photoshop because of how the scripting works. Um, so Photoshop, if you don't know, has JSX scripts, which if you've ever tried to write one of those, I find it confusing and convoluted. I hate JSX scripting. Um, I have done it. I hate it though. But uh, GIMP actually allows you to do Python scripting. So that's pretty nice. I think GIMP overall, just in terms of the scripting experience and integration to workflow with scripts, which um, as you may or may not know, is kind of a big one for me. Um, I think GIMP does a much better job with that. But anyways, I think that's about what I had to talk about. I'm sure somebody else will have something else to mention when it comes to GIMP. So feel free to leave a comment um, if you have, you know, other stuff to explain or other stuff you think I missed in this video or whatever else. I'll probably make another like in-depth guide about GIMP at some point since there's a lot to go over and it's kind of a little bit hard to pack it all into one video and sort of hit all of the key points, but also kind of give a good explanation of everything. I don't know. I hope I did a good job explaining it. Anyways, that is about it. I will see you next time. Peace.